Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I am back with Thomas Knauer. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Um, this is the second of a two part interview, and in our first one, we talked about your quilts and how you design them specifically for your children. And they all have a lot of meaning behind them. But in this ish, um, episode, we're going to be talking about your more political quilts that really tell some very serious stories mm -hmm. or ones that are very important to you. So what's the first one that we want to talk about here? Um, uh, in defense of Handmade, okay. um, which is one, the ultimate beast for me of a piecing project, getting those anybody's tried piecing 66 inch long strips that finish to a half inch to other things that are pieced and sub pieced it was i fell in love with starch <laughs> i can imagine and pins yeah and i don't usually pin anything but this one it's sort of about that the way the word handmade and especially now handcrafted is being used of handcrafted is often a word used to a marketing term yeah. to say it's not, we're not saying it's handmade, it's handcrafted, whatever that might mean. Um, yeah, it's a, word, it's a term that I don't think a lot of us could give a real definite definition of. We assume it means handmade, yes. but it, it's a it special made up word. It just operates on connotation. Um, and, and I originally ran into it at a store that had quilts that were made from handcrafted patterns, whatever that might mean. Right. Um, so I went and bought a mass-produced quilt from a department store and scanned that barcode in uh, to an enormously high resolution so I could blow it up to become a pattern for a queen quilt. So this is an actual UPC symbol for, for an a mass-produced quilt. Okay. Yes, um, and if you you know take a photo of it, a flat photo of the quilt, and use online, you can find barcode reading things mm -hmm. and it will lead you back to the product. I see. Um, so that's how carefully I was measuring. But it really is then, I am choosing and focusing on that, the barcode as the device of ultimately monetizing. It is when the product is read and turned into exchange right. value. What does it mean to take that, that moment as, as a basis for making something handmade that I now sleep under. And I want to actively say, I, I want this thing. And really it's not right. about handmade versus mass produced. We buy mass produced stuff. It is it's about being very careful ourselves, about that word and not even just the word handmade, but the ethos of what does it mean to make is very different than what it means to buy. And one isn't right. always better, you can't make everything, but let's not blur that because then we're devaluing makers and, mm -hmm. and the time and giving time is giving a part of your life. And so we are just then devaluing people by consciously blurring as a society and as a commercial practice that what handmade means. Mm -hmm. Tell me, um, who quilted this? Lisa Sipes, who is, we'll see with all of the quilts we're going to talk about here, absolutely brilliant, technically phenomenal, and a little bit stark raving mad. Yes, um, to do I've the heard. I've not met her. But. Um, to have, in, in this case, to, very, to have never quilted over the prints. Ah. So between the print strips yeah. in there, she's doing tie-offs of these tiny little bits that still match up on the ruler work perfectly. And she quilted it in three different shades of white to uh, light gray, just to get a little more texture in there. And just felt like talking about handmade. Made, should, right. Since her work is so on display in this quilt, we should, um, yes. I didn't know that she and quilted these other yes, ones Yes, and too, she again, hand guides. So this is not, you know, this is her. 
And mm -hmm. handmade doesn't mean necessarily for me mean only using handwork. It means that it is about my thought, my engagement, and my doing. Because this is long armed. This is long armed. But still, it's hand guided, and yes. it's, there's a lot of artistry and right. thought that goes and, into and it. And we it's collaborate. I don't think of her as she doesn't. She isn't the person who quilted my quilts. She she finishes the quilts. We make them together okay. um, in very many ways. They wouldn't be what they are without her, and we have an amazing relationship working together. Well, let's talk about this, because this is one where uh, you can see the quilting on the front, but in a minute we're going to turn it to the back so you can really see the extra layer of meaning right. that the quilting adds. So I wanted to make a quilt for my aunt and her partner, and, and they've been together for years and years and years, and now finally, thanks to Utah, uh, married. Okay, her female partner, yes. we should say. Yes, yes. And um, I wanted to bring in the idea of, okay, you know, speak to same-sex marriage. And I didn't want it to be a protest or a yelling sort of thing. This is about just comfortableness. For me, it just goes, they, I don't see, I understand the reasons of opposition, but it seems they love each other. They are together. They are married. Their relationship is much like mine and my wife, wife's. So I wanted to make a very comfortable quilt. You, know, you could think about, you know, do I do the rainbow colors in a double wedding ring? But that just seemed so hammery. Okay. So I then decided to do a pride flag, but I didn't want to do just simple stripes. I wanted to do then a patchwork pride flag. So the quilt in some ways reads as a patchwork quilt first. Yes. And then you find the rainbow progression. Mm -hmm. um, so it's again, it's very comfortable. Um, I wanted the quilt materially to be very comfy, mm -hmm. not over, you know, not super dense in the stitching. Right. But I wanted to then, how do I bring in that marriage side, then quilting that pride flag as though it were a double wedding ring, and sort of writing that story into the other story, and using quilting and piecing as two voices that, that blend. This quilt I called Palimpsest, and it's part of a series, and a palimpsest is a writing over another piece of writing. Okay. Um, it is often found in medieval artifacts when paper wasn't paper, it was animal skin, and paper was incredibly expensive. Right. So that writing the one story into the other. So um, you can see it, if, you, if you're looking closely, you can see the quilting, but you really see it when you turn it to the white background. You can see there, oh, there's that familiar double wedding ring, classic, traditional, traditional quilting shape. Right. And, and what it means, and now it's just written into the other message and how those then come together, which is really, then it's sort of a marriage of these two ideas and they play with each other beautifully, I mm -hmm. think, in this quilt. And that's kind of the message of, and it's meant to be comfy and cozy and it's sort of lap quilt size versus bed of just, this is the one you just have thrown over the couch and you watch a movie yeah. under it. And, I love and those. that sort of, what does materiality even speak in terms of adding metaphor of how a quilt is used as part of its, its life and its mm -hmm, message. Mm -hmm. And then let's take a look at this third quilt, which has, um, uh, again, it's a quilt that you could look at and say, oh, okay, I see a shape and I see some quilting. Let's talk about, and it's also long. We're, this is only half of it. We've got it it's, folded it's in half. It's a little over 13 feet long, mm -hmm. uh, 40 inches wide. And it's made of 1,600 of these small blocks or these small units. Um, and that number came from, on average, in America, 1,600 people are killed in domestic violence incidents every year. 80% um, are women, so 20% are men. Um, and that became part of the design was that having that ratio. In fact, these were made, I, I put a call out for help and people all over the world sent me blocks that were then five of the small units. So four of the five were in I warm see. tones, one was cool tones, and we have that, I got it. that integration. Um, and they all just came. And that's one of the wonderful things I love about the quilting community is we, we take part in, in these things, in these mm -hmm. projects, in charity projects or in speaking about things. And it really was important to me that this was a community effort to make this, not a just my voice that 
Well, it's um, everybody's problem. It is, and that was part of, again, what does it mean to work with community versus alone can change your message greatly. Um, and it then, the length was really part of it. The piece is called Excess, and it's one of my rare wall quilts, and it's not made for a giant atrium or an ideal space. It's meant to hang on an ordinary wall, which means Vertically. That, vertically. Not horizontally. Not horizontally, which means that vast quantities of the quilt itself will pool and puddle and flow over onto the floor in excess of the hanging space. And that is, again, a material metaphor of for each one of those lives lost is a horrible, terrible excess that we need to do more about, that we need to speak to more and give better protections for, you know, one of the great reasons people don't speak about it is a, well, one, a sh fear of, sh being, of, of feeling shame, right. but also a fear of reprisal. Yeah. Um, and we need to do more. And we've been seeing that, that in the news this past year. This has very much been in the news. Yes. Um, but you made this before the oh, yeah. like the sports this was done, issues yeah, that have been, been coming done. up the past year or so. This was um, actually done about the time, and that brings the quilt in. And again, how amazing Lisa is, is when I f we were doing this, was when the Violence Against Women Act was up for. Um, renewal right and it was held up in senate because of the addition of language that explicitly extends the provisions to people in same-sex relations or in same-sex relationships and that was controversial for some so lisa this you know she considers this more probably one of the most emotionally difficult quilts because she's quilted quilted i asked her to quilt in tech excerpted text from the violence against women act into the quilt. So again, it feels like a texture, but you know, when you see over a certain dark area, you get a yeah. sense that's not a stipple, those are letters. Yeah. So the top of the quilt is to your right, right? Yes. So I'm here seeing text here in front of me. And I'm I can't really read it, and if I turned it over, I wouldn't necessarily It'd be, be reversed. Be reversed and it doesn't necessarily it have to be read because the text exists elsewhere. Yeah. But knowing what the text is changes you know that relationship but she of, had to be really in there with the text and she had to, to be do this she had concentrating to, to not to keep her line straight to not have a error and not make a typo while she is a typo. Yeah. reading that text and knowing what each of these pieces yeah. signifies is just emotionally you are vulnerable when you're trying that hard and so in something and then to be reading those words and know this, it was, it's amazing what she will take on. Just as quilting a double wedding ring into a quilt that isn't a double wedding ring, you have no visual guidance. So I could spend forever talking about her, but that is. Um, she does things for me that are mind bending because she's as committed to the ideas mm -hmm. and the issues and the concerns as I am. And mm -hmm. that's why we have such a great, I think, collaboration. But with this one, and again, with this one, I can't imagine, it is a, there's the pattern for it, not that it needs much pattern information in the book, but... Modern Quilt Perspectives, yes. your book, Modern Quilt Perspectives. I can't, I, I wouldn't expect any individual to necessarily make this for their home, but it was included there, and my goal for it is that guilds will hopefully get together and collaborate and make this in connection with the local organization. Yeah. I was lucky enough to have my local chapter of the YWCA, which offers more services for survivors and victims of domestic violence and sexual abuse than just about any other organization in the country. Um, they asked to hang it at their fundraiser um, for Domestic Violence Month, and I'm going to be doing next year. I plan a series of quilts that I will donate for auction to the Y because I can't write big enough a check as I would you know, right. like to to support right. them, but maybe through the work I can, and I would love for more and more guilds to make one of these and work with a local organization and get the and speak more and get to a point where the quilt doesn't need to be quite so long. <laughs> yes, you know, represent it yes. as years go on. I, I would love to see these see shrink, it disappear. And shrink and shrink and yeah. never be needed. Fantastic! Again. It's a great um, example. All of these are great examples of quilts as art, quilts as advocacy, quilts as personal expression the whole shebang. Thank you so much for being here. This has been wonderful. We could do 
15 episodes, I think, <laughs> if we wanted to, talking about your different quilts. But um, thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed this interview. We hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.